Hello, and welcome to Christ Church. We're so happy that you're joining us today. Go to ChristChurchNYC.online to fill out a digital connection card where you can share prayer requests and tell us a little bit more about yourself. There, you will also find a list of upcoming events, including daily prayer, theology on tap, and soon you will start to see information for our upcoming fall programming, including a membership class, a fall spiritual retreat, kickoff Sunday, and more. Beginning September 28th, we will be returning to in-person small groups here at the church on Wednesday nights. Small groups are meant to engage the spiritually curious, form new bonds of friendship, and connect with each other in more meaningful ways. Sign up at ChristChurchNYC.online slash groups. If you've been to the website recently, you will see that we've begun to live stream the service on Sunday mornings. We're experimenting this month to see how we will move forward in the future with virtual programming. If you have thoughts about the live stream or this virtual production, please email our communications director, Brandon Batson, at brandon at christchurchnyc.org. Now, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. The author of Hebrews has been calling the hearers back to the faith that confessed at their conversion and to which they held firm in the early days. Mutual love is a fundamental trait of good Christian community and crucial for survival where a community must stick together in the face of danger. Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 8 and 15 and 16. Let mutual affection continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them, those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed be kept undefiled for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you, consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Jesus is not being watched closely to see what they might learn from him. He's being watched closely to assess just how much of a threat he really might be. Luke chapter 14, verses one and seven through 14. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host and the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. He said also to the one who had invited him, 
When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers and sisters or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on. Well, we are here, all black and white, trying to fight for equal rights. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on. They came from Los Angeles and San Francisco, or about the distance from Moscow to Bombay. They came from Cleveland, Chicago, or about the distance from Buenos Aires to Rio de Janeiro. They came from Jackson, Mississippi, from Birmingham, Alabama, or about the distance from Johannesburg to Dar es Salaam. By the end of August 1963, in some places of the United States, a Negro could not go to school where he chose, eat where he wished, build his home where it pleased him, or find jobs for which he was qualified, said the narrator of the documentary entitled The March by James Blue. He goes on by saying he had been insulted, beaten, jailed, drenched with water, chased by dogs, but he was coming to Washington, he said, to swallow up hatred and love, to overcome violence by peaceful protests. Yes, it was hard to imagine nonviolence. This is especially in light of what we have witnessed since January 6, 2021. My, what a difference. The volunteers and protesters were trained mentally and physically to resist the temptation to engage in physical altercations. There was a strategy to address any violence that would befall them. On that day, the 250,000 or so citizens were determined to exercise their constitutional right to protest peacefully. It was on this day in 1963 that the March on Washington for jobs and justice took place. A century before that, Abraham Lincoln had declared all persons free. And here in New York, volunteers made 80,000 cheese sandwiches for the attendees of the march. For two days and two nights, the volunteers, black and white, worked together to make their mark on that historic day, all the while singing songs of the freedom movement. Like hold on, keep your eyes on the prize and hold on. And like so many others from around the country, especially along the East Coast, these volunteers were ready to live into the scripture for today's lectionary that you heard from Hebrews. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. The goal of the march was for freedom and jobs. Yes, and on that day, Malcolm X attended the story was recounted by a woman who was 16 years old at that time, quoting what she personally heard Malcolm X saying upon his arrival. She was there as one in attendance to receive visitors and guests, and he came into the area where she was stationed. And she said, and I quote, I could not not be here, is what he said. I couldn't believe my ears, she told the reporter. That was an example of mutual love. The moment was met with an understanding of the mutual need for justice and liberation. Malcolm X knew that the experience had the capacity to break down the barriers of division and assist the plight of the black community, then called Negroes. Lord have mercy. So while his ideological position was different from Dr. King's and the nonviolent movement was not his preferred method, he understood that the historical moment was far 
weightier than the distinctions, theological and otherwise, made by the two leaders. On that day, no one was an outsider. The sheer humanity of all God's creation was not only a welcomed unifier, it was the scriptural imperative that guided Dr. King and all the demonstrators, volunteers, activists, organizers, everyone in attendance from all persuasions and all theological traditions. Yes, all theological traditions, all races, all creeds were among the 250,000 or so attendees on August 28, 1963. So today I pick up where our senior minister left off from last week's sermon. He gave a preview of the meaning of this moment in time and juxtaposed it with his reflections on that moment in history. Yes, he's been reflecting upon what his, his now 70th year will mean and all the experiences in life and ministry as he prepares for retirement, which led up to this point and leaned into the anniversary of the March on Washington in his message last week. In some ways, his reflective analysis reminds me of what the writer of Hebrews was trying to say to that community. The people were being called back to the faith they first confessed. They were reminded to hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize as the freedom fighters and those marchers proclaimed the writer in Hebrews was saying to this community of gathered Christians, keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on. Yes, the writer of Hebrews told them that they would only be successful if they worked together. Only if they worked together. Like one of the other freedom songs, walk together children, don't you get weary, for there's a great camp meeting in the promised land. The people then needed to work together to remember what brought them into the faith and the belief and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We have also come to this hollow spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now, Dr. King said in that speech. This is no time to engage in the luxury of cooling off or to take the tranquilizing drug of gradualism. Now is the time to make real the promises of democracy, he said. Now is the time to rise from the dark and desolate valley of segregation to the sunlit path of racial justice. Now is the time to lift our nation from the quicksands of racial injustice to the solid rock of brotherhood. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. But there is something that I must say to my people who stand on the warm threshold which leads into the palace of justice. In the process of gaining our rightful place, we must not be guilty of wrongful deeds. Let us not seek to satisfy our thirst for freedom by drinking from the cup of bitterness and hatred. We must forever conduct our struggle on the high plane of dignity and discipline. We must not allow our creative protest to degenerate into physical violence. Again and again, we must rise to the majestic heights of meeting physical force with soul force. In his way, Dr. King takes us back to the message of the writer of Hebrews today. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on, hold on. My sisters and brothers, as we still continue in our fight and our quest to live out that admonition that the writer of Hebrews gives to us, to allow the mutual love and respect to flow and to entertain strangers with the love of hospitality. Let us hold on. Keep your eyes on the prize and hold on.
And now let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us to pray by saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And now, beloved of the Lord, go in peace knowing that God's peace will be with you always. Go in service in God's world, helping those in need, sharing the gifts you have been given. Go in love, bring hope to all. Amen. <music>